Hey guys, welcome back. It's Gabby with Binge Now. There's nothing like watching a wholesome Hallmark movie curled up on the couch. It's the best thing ever. While several movies have made it big, these are the top 10 highest grossing Hallmark movies of all time. So sit back, relax. We're going to get straight into it. At number 10, we have The Color of Rain. Based on a heartbreaking true tale, this story revolves around Michael and Gina Sven, a couple who met after their respective partners passed away from cancer. I know it doesn't feel like it right now, but it does get easier. Due to their shared experiences, the two initially became friends, and before you know it, things began to brew. In an interview, Michael said, we found common ground in our grief and in overcoming our grief. Aha moment for us that Maybe this story is one we should be sharing. Two years later, they got married. Yeah, this is a classic case where their story went from mourning to dancing. Are we a family? This is life. Now I can be even more beautiful than before. And I love you. I love you too. Mean Girls actor Lacey Chabert and Warren Christie accurately portray the real life relationship in the movie. It was so special in how inspiring it was, Chabert told TV Goodness, and I thought it would be something that people could relate to and hopefully also learn from. Christie stated that they wanted to make sure the Sven family enjoyed the movie, and well, the family was content, and so were the fans. Up next at number 9, we have The Christmas Box. Though it was released in 1995, The Christmas Box still manages to make it to this list. The Hallmark original holiday film appears to have withstood the test of time. This place is gorgeous. This place is like a prison. The movie, which is based on the same named best-selling novel, follows a family as they move in with an elderly widow and learn the true meaning of Christmas. It's understandable why the movie stands out from the others. Guess who plays the widow? Mrs. Parkin? The Evanses are here. None other than the legendary Maureen O'Hara. I have never skied, Mr. Evans. The thought of flying down a mountainside on two narrow pieces of wood has never appealed to me. O'Hara stated in an interview with the Los Angeles Times that the script instantly drew her to the movie. You read a script and you like it and you think, hmm, that would be fun to do something with, she said. And the learning about love and about what the real, the first gift of Christmas was. And it's a really very beautiful story and you'll need a box of Kleenex when good, you see good. it. Good, good. If you go by its rating and ongoing popularity, the Christmas box is definitely staying on this list for much longer. Up next, at number 8, we have Love Begins. The 2011 movie Love Begins is truly a period romance set in the 19th century, in contrast to many previous Hallmark movies. Although it's a part of the Love Comes Softly series, the cast is entirely new. The story is about how a stranger moves into town and ends up working as a farmhand for two sisters. The prodigy is faced with a difficult situation when the fiancé returns to town. I know what I want now. Hey. This pleasant and romantic movie is ideal for you if you like to travel back in time. The two characters learn crucial lessons as they fall in love, as Ellen's actor Julie Mond remarked in a Hallmark Channel Damn, interview. It's incredibly unconventional for a woman of 20 years of age to be running a ranch without her parents and uh, raising her sister. Actor Wes Brown added, She started to realize, well, maybe there's a little more to this country-bound, gold-seeking person than, you know, her, her prejudgments. Since it is set in the Wild West, this surely sounds like the ideal enemies to lovers romance. You know, I never intended on being here. If I could have repaid that debt, I would have. Your point is? As long as I'm here, I'm going to be civil to you. All I ask is you do the same in return. I think. At number seven, we have Morning Show Mystery, Mortal Mishaps. Not every Hallmark success is a love story. Actually, some of their most well-liked movies are thrillers, like this one. This incredibly entertaining mystery film follows the tale of a morning show host who becomes a prime suspect in a homicide investigation after a TV executive passes away. She naturally decides to find the answer herself in order to clear her name. We all enjoy a good whodunit, and this one seems like it won't let us down. Oh, well, he's made bad decisions before. Look, Maurice took that cake to Rudy because he got a text from me telling him to take it, only I didn't send him a text. The movie was based on a book authored by the morning show personality, Al Roker. Billy, that was one of the most amazing live interviews I have ever seen. I wish I could have done something like that. You must really be proud. Keep up the good work. 
according to Holly Robinson Pete, who portrays lead heroine Billy Blessing. It seems like Robinson Pete and co star Rick Fox's chemistry was a major factor in this movie's success. He's drop dead gorgeous, he's a generous actor, he studies his craft, he came prepared, and he was a dream to work with, she said. It also sounds like seeing the movie is a dream. Maurice couldn't have done this because he's in jail. Maybe they saw me at Rudy's building. Well, they saw you doing something else I don't know about. Well, you were following me, so you know everything. And now, moving on to number six, Christmas Getaway. Typically, a couple will meet, have a disagreement, and then gradually discover the true meaning of love and Christmas. If that's the recipe for success, then Hallmark's 2017 movie, Christmas Getaway, meets every need. This straightforward, charming rom-com centers on a travel journalist who unintentionally spends Christmas sharing a rental home with a widower and his family. So, so we're all gonna stay here? No. Terrell Rothery plays the mother of the widower in the film. She claimed that the movie has everything you could desire from a Christmas movie in an interview on My Devotional Thoughts. You'll see some ice skating, sleigh rides, singing and caroling, and all sorts of fun stuff, she said. It also, of course, has a lovely happy oh, ending. Well, I promised Katie that I'd help her decorate the tree once her grandma gets here. Which is the quintessential Christmas experience, right? Especially with a cute kid and her handsome single father. I never said he was handsome. Is he? At number five, we have The Lost Valentine. Here's one Hallmark movie that featured some big names from Hollywood. The 2011 movie, The Lost Valentine, features Betty White and Jennifer Love Hewitt. 25 years I've been working here. You haven't been late once. No, in the 40 years before that. <laughs> Throughout the course of the film, White plays a war widow who returns to her neighborhood railway station on the same day every year in the hopes that her lost husband would be found and returned from the war. Of course, by this point, the pilgrimage is merely symbolic. Hewitt portrays a young journalist sent to cover her tale. Of course, when the reporter starts having feelings for the widow's grandson, things take a romantic Sarah. turn. Look, I am not going to let Caroline Thomas die without the answers that she has been looking for. Betty White alone, according to one variety of review, makes the movie well worth seeing. But if you enjoy a decent love tale, you'll probably also enjoy Hewitt's. He swears he'll come back. She swears she'll wait. He goes missing in action. But 65 years later, she's still living up to her end of the bargain. She lived At number four, we have The Watsons Go to Birmingham. It's unlikely that you'd anticipate Hallmark to produce movies with a social justice or political theme, but The Watsons Go to Birmingham does exactly that. The Watson family is followed in this movie as they travel to Alabama in 1963, when they unintentionally played a significant role in the civil rights movement. Children, in a few days, we're gonna drive to Birmingham. It's time for us to see our family and for you to get to know your southern roots. In the movie's featurette, producer Nikki Silver said, It's a great story and there are images in this film that you just don't see today. While this movie is undoubtedly a heartwarming tale of a family, it also provides viewers with some genuine instructional Rain. material. It is Mr. and Mrs. Watson, yes? And, and this is your son, isn't it? This isn't our son. <laughs> this is just a little juvenile delinquent boy that we feel sorry for and let us follow us around some of the time. This movie is ideal for young people to watch because it gently promotes uncomfortable but crucial talks about the history of the American Civil Rights Movement. We should deem the land the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, an endless plain. All, all the stretch of these great green states. It appears that this is not only one of Hallmark's best films, but also one of its most significant. Here's what the screenwriter, Tanya Lewis Lee, had to say. I decided I wanted to work on The Watsons Go to Birmingham as soon as I read the book. I felt like I had an understanding of the characters, and I thought I could really help bring it to life. At number three, we have The Edge of the Garden. This is an endearing tale of Brian, a man from the big city who impulsively relocates to an ancient house in the country. Nothing like this in the city. I don't want to buy, I want to lease. You don't strike me as the sort to throw money away on rent. This here would be an investment. When he learns that he can see the ghost of the woman named Nora, who previously resided in the same house 50 years before, things start to get a little weird. Well, may I have it, please? Yeah. You are. Whatever you are, you stay away from us! If you're a romantic, this movie won't let you down. I'm 
getting to feel that if you care about someone enough, time doesn't mean a thing. The lead actor, Rob Estes, revealed in an interview, we can see each other and hear each other and try to get an understanding of each other, but we cannot touch. 1960. Mm -hmm. Why are you looking at me like that? I... Because for me, it's 50 years later. That's impossible. Actress Sarah Mananen, who plays Nora, commented, I think the audience will like the love story and the fact that the story is about two people who have this great friendship and then learn something from each other and take that with them and use it in their lives. Well, we are sold. Down to the top two, we have signed, sealed, delivered, home again. The well-liked television series, Sign Sealed Delivered Home Again, follows the Postables, a team of postal workers who try to re-deliver old lost mail. The group in Home Again unearths an intriguing mystery in an old vase. We found something your children may have mailed to an art dealer 18 years ago. Because it isn't a vintage, endearing movie that immediately won over Hallmark lovers. The best thing about this movie is that it's part of a fantastic series of movies that just keep getting better. Speaking about the movie, actress Kristen Booth stated in an interview, This script is, I think, the best ever written. Just the way that the postable story and the letter story, the way that it all works together. She appeared to cry each time she read the script. This entire series seems to be worthwhile to watch. And finally, at number one, we have Love Comes Softly. The Love Comes Softly series is one of Hallmark's most popular and highest grossing series. In this 2003 movie, Katherine Hegel and Dale Midkiff play a 19th century American prairie couple who wed out of need. Sick and tired of the dirt and miles that seem to lead nowhere and the layers of dust on my skin. Aching feet, aching back. If I never sit in that wagon again, it'll be all right by me. In an interview, she said that the tale was based on the true account of her ancestors who needed to get married in order to survive. The film has a strong Christian undercurrent, which made it difficult to get off the ground, as director Michael Landon Jr. noted in an interview. I took 10 years to get Love Come Softly done because everybody thought it was too soft, he said. But you know, I've always been somewhat outspoken in my faith. Each film has something of a soul, and I think people can smell a fake. Fortunately, he persisted and produced the movie he had in mind, and we believe it's safe to say he made the right decisions giving its lasting popularity. With that, we've come to the end of this video. Were any of these movies one of your favorites? Let us please know in the comments down below. And do show some love to our channel by hitting the like and subscribe button and also turn on post notifications. We'll be back with more. Thanks for watching.